So this is a follow-up to my greenhouse video. If you're not familiar with that video, you ought to go back and watch that first. Um, I designed uh, a very easy to make, uh, inexpensive greenhouse. Um, more than a greenhouse, and I'm going to show you that in this video, but uh, just an easy to put up. Uh, hundreds of them have been built. But I'm going to show you today how, how flexible the design is. I need a shed. Uh, for my sheep. Uh, this will make a real good sheep or goat shed and uh, I'm also going to fix a flaw on the original greenhouse. I want to show you that. So let's get started. I went and uh, bought my cattle panels. Uh, this is 16 foot trailer, 16 foot cattle panels. Let's get started building this quick shed. Okay so I've got about an hour in this and it's, uh, it's ready to staple down across there. I'll do that in a second. I'll show you that in a second. But let me show you what I did differently on this one that I didn't do on the first one. Uh, two different things. The, the only flaw that I have found in this design is these runners, these outside boards, because the the cattle panel is wanting to spring out. The cattle panel wants to be straight. It is in an arc. So it's pushing out this way. You, uh, you can get a bow right here in your runner. You know what I'm talking about, your outside runners. It can bow out a little bit. Okay? Like that. So, uh, I had a guy over here the other day that uh, was uh, about to build my design or had already and he said you ought to put a uh, a two before on the outside of it laying it flat like this to your two by six or two other two before whether uh, this one I've got a two by six I'm running I'm using two by six runners he said put a, a, a board on the outside and nail it to it which I did before I even laid them on the ground and uh, this board here this two before will keep that board from from warping. Uh, just simply because, like I say, the pressure on that cattle panel that's pushing on it. The second thing I did, and one of the reasons I did this because I just didn't have, I thought I had some two by fours and I didn't have one. These are uh, a ripped two by six. But uh, normally uh, uh, what I would recommend now is a two by six runner and a two by four across here, nailing it flush on the top. Okay? The reason being, as you're pulling it, now if you're not, if you're not moving yours, if yours is stationary, then, then don't worry about this. Um, but if you, uh, if you are pulling it, you may have some of the problems that I've had. And that is, I'm snagging it on a rock, I'm snagging it on a root, uh, a gopher mound, whatever. And if this board here, as it's sliding this way, you know, this is your skid here, like a sled runner. As it's sliding this way, as it's going this way, that board will snag on something if it's all the way to the ground. So I have left about two inches on this between the ground and the um, uh, the, the board here. So two reasons for that. Again, so it won't snag as you're pulling it. And when I pull mine, I pull it like... I store mine back in the back in a back pasture and it's 100 150 yards so it, you know I'm pulling it quite a distance at a time you may just be hauling yours uh, a few feet from shade to sun you know in the in your yard or something like that and this may not be an issue for you but that's the main reason is for pulling issues I'm not going to snag that on a root a, the root is going to just go jump over this skid, and it's not going to hit there. I've even broke the runner, the back runner on my other greenhouse, first one I built. Broke it and had to mend it because it snagged on a root, and I was pulling it with something strong like my tractor, and if I pull it with my tractor, something's got to give, and it ain't going to be the tractor. So uh, that's one reason. So that board gave, cracked. Um, another thing, if you're building a greenhouse out of this, and like I say, I'm building a, a sheep goat shed out of this, but if you're building a greenhouse, to have a space underneath here, a gap underneath there, an air gap, um, I think is a, is a good thing, especially in the summertime, if you live in a hot climate. You, uh, you put that vent on the back like I showed you in the other one. I'll, I'll link to that too. But this will give you airflow. Cool air comes in here. Warm air goes out the vent or out the door, wherever you, whatever you're doing here. 
So that's uh, that's also another idea to consider. I would use a two before. Like I said, I just didn't have a two before, so I ripped a two by six that I had that was old and I'd used in a in a chicken house, and was just laying out there. You can see where I ripped it here. But uh, but I'd go uh, two by sixes over your skids, uh, and then two by fours for the um, uh, ends. And uh, it's going to be very. Uh, very tight, but I'll raise these up <clears throat> again. I'll put a, a two before or something under them and raise them up just a little bit before I nail them with the uh, fencing staples. Just wanted to show you this uh, stage I'm in right now and tell you why I did those boards with the air gap <clears throat> underneath like I did. All right, let me uh, tie this down a little bit and I'll show you the next stage. I forgot to tell you, these runners are 14 feet. That's a 14 foot womanized two by six and those are 14 foot womanized two by fours that are nailed to the side of it that gives you that's for a three panel you can use a 12 footer if you're going to use it to do a two panel greenhouse so this is for a three panel just trying to give you some dimensions if you want to go a little bigger okay because i know i'm going to be pulling this probably from one pasture to another uh, especially if i do rotational grazing I'm putting these braces uh, on the sides like that. I'll put a brace there and brace here. So let me put that on there and I'll show you that. I forgot to show you stapling down the uh, uh, the cattle panels <clears throat> but you just use uh, fence staples that is an inch and a half fence staple the other one is a one inch fence staple you want the inch and a half you want that extra half inch to penetrate to get down in there good because you know you're 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 you're, mi you're losing that much of it because of the cattle panel cattle, pa cattle panel is about quarter inch uh, rod so you're losing a little bit of it you want that full inch and a half to go in there inch is not good enough inch and a half okay see the difference now maybe you can see the difference so here it is uh, finished the tarp didn't quite cover it like I thought it would it's a 16 by 12 tarp but uh, it is about uh, it's 151 and some some odd change inches, so I'm missing a little bit. You know, didn't quite cover it. About the same on the other end over there. I've got the silver side of the tarp out, just simply because didn't want to have to look out the back door at a blue tarp. <laughs> um, but the uh, the sheep have come in it some. It stopped raining shortly after I built it, so. Uh, they're not going to shelter in it overnight if it's not raining, but uh, just an excellent shelter that the the, uh, the um, Tarp tightened it up a little bit Wobbling, but you're gonna have to have some horrendous winds for this thing to move it all. I mean to, to, to do anything move enough to damage it or anything what I did was screw the tarp down I didn't want to actually uh, screw into the tarp so I found some little metal strips and I'm not sure what they are they look like the caps for a two before I don't know I had them in a I bought a cabinet from a guy and he was full of stuff and that's just some of the stuff in it so I just drilled a hole through the grommet I had, I had a grommet hole there and there and I just used this almost as like a big washer and I screwed this down here and about three or four times all the way down it and uh, Pulled it good and tight, pulled it tight there, tied it in a couple of places on each end, and it's uh, it's doing well. It's rained hard. We've got a lot more rain than when I talked to you last. But anyway, it's uh, it's working out real well. Uh, this is something I can pull from from pasture to pasture if need be. Uh, I'm probably going to put it uh, down there somewhere and just leave it. Uh, it'll be a good shade for them in the summer, a uh, good place for them to go in the winter, uh, or in the anytime it rains. They like a they like a little shelter when it rains. So uh, that's it. I want to show you one other design 
um, so don't go away quite yet. Show you something else I did with this uh, with this type of design. Okay, this is the other one I want to show you, and this is uh, another sheep um, house, um, sheep shelter. Could be a goat shelter, donkey shelter, whatever. They think I'm gonna feed them. I just got through feeding them. Y'all can't be hungry. <laughs> anyway, uh, and what I did on this, and I've shown you in the book, in case you didn't get the book, and you should, um, just put up some purlins. These are 12 feet long. This um, fiberglass is 12 feet long. And uh, I need to trim off my purlins and stuff. But uh, basically, just put some purlins and I, doing it by myself, I hold it with some uh, cable ties. I hold them with cable ties while I'm screwing them and then come in here and screw through the fiberglass down into this. And once you get two or three screws in there, it's, it'll hold it real good. Uh, this one leaks just a little bit and it's because it's sitting flat if it was uh, if I had, you know, more of an angle on the roof, if I had it sitting one way or the other a little bit, I think water would drain off of it better. I overlapped the corrugations uh, up here twice. You can see that. Overlapped one, two times. But it's still right in the middle of it. It leaks a little bit, so... Uh, and this is the original greenhouse that I built. I've just made a sheep shed out of it. I'm going to build another greenhouse for uh, for my own uh, for a greenhouse. So, uh, but this is the original greenhouse I built in the original uh, uh, video, Texas Preppers Greenhouse. So, if you hadn't seen that yet, go back and watch it. It's one of the first videos I did. Uh, and this one, this one is two and a half cattle panels. One, two, and about a half. Two and a half cattle panels long. So it's 12 feet. Right at 12 feet. Uh, not quite 12 feet because, like I say, the corrugation is 12 feet. So this is just another way uh, to, to build your shed. Um, is using uh, corrugated metal. Now metal's a little, metal is a little uh, heavy. So, you know, I would... I would do something like this. I'm going to probably spray paint this. This was covered up with, with dirt and it's just nasty looking. It's supposed to be kind of an opaque fiberglass uh, like a greenhouse panel. And it's just nasty, but it's probably 20 years old. Uh, and it was laying on the ground most of its life. I took it off the deck a long time ago. Uh, but I'm going to come in here and just spray paint it probably red to match the barn. or. Uh, my shed over there, my new shed. But I'll probably either paint it white or red, and uh, just you know, with a quick, give it a quick spray, like I did my other building. But it's uh, it, it turned out real well. It's um, it's a good place for you, you know, if you want to catch them. Be a good lambing jug, uh, what they call them, where you can put a ewe in here or a goat in here that's fixing to lamb. Are fixing the kid and uh, secure her in here, shut the door, and then you've got access to her if you have to go help her or, or do something. So this is just another option, and that is putting some type of corrugated material on here. Uh, I would I would suggest strongly that you go with something besides metal, even though metal nowadays is is cheap and thin and not that heavy it's still heavy enough okay this stuff is pretty light uh, the polycarbonate the PVC is going to be real light so I would uh, I would think about doing that hope I'm explaining it uh, enough to where you can figure out what the heck I'm talking about uh, but anyway this is just another option and it's worked out it's worked out real good I just I just did this one uh, just a few weeks ago and uh, works real good. Uh, again, I've got a little bit of a leak on top, but then I used used stuff that already had holes in it. This is from my deck from years ago, so it's got holes in it. I could go in there with all these holes, and uh, and it's got lots of them. 
and put caulk on it or you know put, put some silicone in each hole and stop some of that that may be where the leaks were coming from or I could just prop one end up lift lift one end up and get it sitting more at an angle and then the water should shut off fast enough to where it's not going to leak uh, but anyway this is um, another option and uh, you may want to uh, check out doing it out of this type of material. But there you go, uh, just a real quick shed. The tarp I uh, bought at Sam's, uh, usually I keep tarps around, so it's just something I had, it's brand new, but it's something I've, I've had for a while. I know the wind's kicking up a little bit right now, so maybe I'm kind of garbling a little bit. But uh, it took about two and a half hours to build this, so it's, it's something you can throw up real quick, give your, uh, your animal some shelter. If you stake it, um, I'm sorry about the wind, it just now started picking up. If you stake it down, stake your sides down with some maybe some cut off T-posts or some uh, wood stakes, stake each side of it to where it's not going to spring out, then you can do away with this board here and you can drive in and out with a riding lawnmower, golf cart, um, four wheeler, whatever. It makes a nice little shed for that. but. Uh, or you can build, you know, build you a ramp up uh, over this and whatever to drive in. But that would also, uh, again, make a make a pretty nice little uh, shed for for some of your vehicles or something. Anyway, uh, but, but it's something I've thought about is 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 doing some stakes on the side to keep these sides stationary, and then uh, and, and screw you know screw it to the stake to hold it. And then uh, and, and do away with this board, and you can drive in and out, and uh, make it a permanent structure, and that will work pretty well. You may you may want to come in here and put a vertical stay, you know, on, on a foot or two in on each side, just to keep it uh, a little more sturdy. But uh, shoot, I just uh, unless you live where there's 80 mile an hour winds, uh, I just don't see it. So anyway, that's it. Uh, let me back up a little bit and let you. Let you take a look at it, better look at it. But it's real easy to uh, build. Again, two and a half hours, and it was done. Now I used a nail gun, not a not a screwdriver, not a screw gun. So um, that's one reason it took two and a half hours. <laughs> nail guns are quick. I love me some nail gun. Anyway, that's it. We're gone.